Thanks to NerdWallet for sponsoring a portion of this video. What's going on guys, it's your average consumer, and today we are finally checking out this guy, the Steam Deck. So I'm gonna be giving you guys my thoughts, my review, I guess, but we're gonna be doing this one a little bit differently since this is, I don't wanna say complicated, but this is a device with a lot of layers. There's a lot of different things you can do with this. So today we're going to be tackling this from the perspective of just the average consumer. Just the regular person who wants to pick this up, play some games, kind of like they would do with the Nintendo Switch. I'm not gonna lie, I gotta familiarize myself with all the different things that you can do with this guy. So for now, let's talk about it from the average consumer's perspective. But before we get started, we have to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of this portion of the video, Nerd Wallet. I know for a lot of us, having a good savings account is a big deal. I know that's especially true for you guys, since we all know tech ain't cheap, but sometimes you don't know which accounts are the best for your needs, and that's where Nerd Wallet comes in. So just like we do on the channel to let you know which tech might be the best for you, Nerd Wallet does the same with high yield savings accounts. So you can find one with an interest rate that you're happy with. And I'm not talking interest rates from your everyday savings accounts. These will actually let your money earn more than the traditional account. I like to think my viewers are smarter than the average person. So if you're looking to make equally smart decisions, compare and find the smartest credit cards or those high yield savings accounts, definitely check out Nerd Wallet. I'll of course have everything linked down below in the description so you guys can check them out. But again, shout out to Nerd Wallet for sponsoring this portion of the video. But now let's talk about the Steam Deck. So this is a very interesting device. The second they announced it, it was really intriguing. The possibilities seem endless. For those of you who aren't too familiar with the PC side of gaming, Steam is a platform that has access to a huge, huge library of games. And the idea is to be able to access those games on a portable device instead of something like your PC. So portable PC gaming, that's kind of the way you need to think about this device. Now, when I first saw it, I was like, whoa, that's a, that's a pretty gigantic looking handheld, but I'm not gonna lie. Ergonomically, feels pretty good. I've been using this for a while and playing on it is actually really comfortable. So check it out. You've got your D-pad all the way in the left corner, which looks odd. Same with your, what do you call these? A-pad? I don't know. A-pad. <laughs> Kevin, what do you call these buttons over here? This is your buttons, okay. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> you got your main buttons in the top left and right corners. And while that may look a bit odd when, you've, when you're actually holding it in your hand, it actually feels pretty comfortable. You got the joysticks on the insides and you even have these touch pads, which work as buttons as well, like your D-pads, but they also are touch sensitive. So it gives room for some extra controls I don't have much of a problem with them, but I also haven't used them much in gaming just yet. And you've also got like your Steam button over here, which gives you your Steam menu, and this gives you your quick settings. And up here you have like your share button, menu button, those are more so for in-game. You've got your volume buttons up top, power button over here. Uh, one thing I do wish the power button wasn't recessed, I wish it was just like the volume buttons where it kind of protrudes just a little bit, making it easy to tap. You've also got your headphone jack over here, your USB-C port up top, which you can use to charge it. And interestingly enough, you guys, you have a slot for a micro SD card. So you get some expandable storage right here. So you can, of course, add some extra space so you can add more games. I have the 512 model, so I haven't needed to use this just yet, uh, but I'm sure as I add, more titles, bigger titles, I'll eventually be tapping into that. You've also got a few triggers in the back, kind of like what you see with pro controllers here. I think that's pretty good forward thinking uh, for those of us who are used to playing with this style of play where you map certain buttons in the back. Kind of covers all the bases right here. Uh, overall, I like the layout. I think it feels comfortable. Would I change anything? Probably not. I'm good with this. Is it touch screen? Yes, and that is, I guess, another input as well. You've got your touchscreen, pretty responsive. I don't have uh, much of a problem with the touchscreen. 
It's not bad. Now, this is a 1280 by 800 resolution display, which on paper does not sound great in terms of resolution, but it is a seven inch display. So I think it's fine. Even for those more graphic intensive games, I haven't been sitting here like, man, this is a poor graphical experience because of it. Actually, it looks pretty solid. Now, this is a 60 hertz display, and I don't know, PC gamers might be like, yo, I need 144 or nothing. Uh, but if you're considering what we're dealing with here, a portable PC handheld system, uh, I think 60 passes. I think it's fine. Now, like I said, even though this thing looks large, I feel like the buttons are in a comfortable spot. And I do feel like with the way the sides kind of taper downward, it feels pretty comfortable in the palm. The palms rest very nicely on this. I can play this thing for a long period of time. My hands don't cramp up. I find the Nintendo Switch less comfortable than I do this uh, without like an additional grip or something. This feels surprisingly good in the hand. But what's it like to actually, you know, go around with it, right? Like I said, this is a really big device and it's an expensive device. So for me personally, I'm not just throwing this thing in my backpack. I'm going to protect it. You guys know me, I use cases. So I've been using the included case that I bought with my system. Listen guys, this is a chunky, <laughs> it's a chunky case. So, you know, it offers all the protection that you would want, of course, but this is, the way this is designed, it's not really meant to go, I, I'd say in a backpack, you could do it, I'd do it. Oh, what? <laughs> you see how big this is? Like... It's not even everything. I don't even have my headphones. But, <laughs> you know, you can get it in here. It's fine. But it, it does take up a lot of space. So while I can do it, Carl, it's not fun. I do all that to show you guys. You can make it work, but it is a bit cumbersome. Even for a guy like me who likes to pack a lot, this is a lot. Now let's talk about games, right? That's the most important thing about this. Here's what I have to say about gaming. So I have a few games in my Steam library, not a, not a ton of games, but I've got a few games. And it was to my disappointment to see that so many of my games weren't compatible. So I would highly suggest if you have games in your Steam library and you wanna, you wanna pick this up so you can play those games, Look into what's Steam Deck compatible first. What's nice is that games can be updated in the future so that you can go ahead and add it to the Steam Deck. Um, but as of right now, you might wanna check the status of where those games are. And it's kind of a mixed bag. Sometimes there are games that say, hey, we're not gonna work, like this game. It says it's unsupported, and unsupported basically means it's not officially supported by the Steam Deck. Like Valve hasn't certified that it's good for the system. Sometimes you just gotta download it and see because this is not officially supported, but when I actually tried it, it worked completely fine. So it's, you don't know what you'll get with your library all the time. But what's nice is that Valve does have a great on deck uh, section. So if you do go into the store, you can find a list of games that are 100% compatible. You'll know for sure that they work, but for the games that it does run, how well does it run them, right? Well, I've been playing Tales of Arise the most, and it's been smooth. It's been a really smooth experience. I've been having a really good time until I decided to take it on a trip. I was on a plane, like, oh, I'm about to, I'm about to get it in. I got all this time. I'm gonna do me, play my game, put a bunch of hours in. It was like a five hour flight. And then all of a sudden, while I'm playing, the frames, the frames dropped down to a crawl. I had to be getting like one frame per second. Turned off the system, tried to reboot it, and it basically bricked on me. I don't know what happened, how it happened. It just went and gave me this black screen. And I was super frustrated because I had to wait until I got to my hotel, do a bunch of research, and then I got into the world of really tinkering with this thing in order to make it work. Luckily, I was able to fix it, but I had to download some recovery tools from Valve's website, add an external hard drive to this thing, and then re-image it, which is like basically like reformatting it. Like, 
three different times to get it to work. So it's safe to say I was really disappointed by my first experience traveling with this thing because it just bricked on me out of nowhere. Um, I don't even know what really caused it. Am I scarred a bit? I am because whenever the battery drops down to like 15%, I start seeing those frame drops. I start seeing performance take a hit a bit. And then I'm like, oh man, it's about to brick on me again. <laughs> and I'm gonna have to re-image this thing like three times. So I'm a little scarred. Wasn't crazy about that experience. But I think we're cool for right now. And speaking of dropping under 15%, battery life. Battery life is trash. <laughs> it's it's bad you guys i feel most comfortable playing if i'm close to an outlet is it because i'm playing a graphic intensive game like tales of arise possibly i'm sure if you're playing something that's not as graphic intensive you'll get much longer battery life but the whole idea here is to be able to play those you know great titles portably right um so if that's your cup of tea do not expect good battery life the battery life on this is trash it's trash it's worse than the Nintendo Switch, so just expect to keep that charger nearby. That is the best advice I can give you. Now, one thing I will say is that while playing, a lot of times the fans will kick up. Based on some things that I've seen online, some people's Steam Decks run hotter than others, uh, so that's a whole nother thing that I, I, I don't even wanna know about. I don't wanna know that mine doesn't run the way some others do. I don't need that in my life. Uh, but apparently quality varies, so that's a thing too. So from a software perspective, I feel like Valve did a pretty good job with this. It's really easy to navigate, easy to find the games that you might wanna play on this. I have no real problems with the software. Now, in terms of ease of use, it could be a little bit difficult for folks who encounter issues. I feel like for just finding games, downloading them, playing on it, might be pretty fine, it's pretty self-explanatory, but if you try to get into the other world where you might even want to install Windows and all that kind of stuff, you might need to watch a couple tutorials to make sure you do it right. So overall, do I recommend the Steam Deck? I've had some real hiccups with this thing. I don't know if it's completely recommendable for everyone. I feel like you have to understand that this basically is a handheld PC and you've gotta be willing to learn how to tinker with it a little bit to get the most out of it. So what I recommend is for like my little cousin or maybe someone who isn't really tech savvy, probably not. I feel like if you are a PC gamer, chances are you'll probably just find picking this up and being able to use this with no problem. But we're gonna talk about having experience and just all the stuff that you can actually do with this thing from adding windows, getting into emulation to get the most out of this and all the other stuff in another video. That video I feel like is for the person who's maybe a little bit more experienced, more experienced than myself, because now I'm gonna go do the research, learn what I can do with this and learn how to maximize my use out of it. Do another video uh, for those people who are a bit more experienced. We're gonna see how this fares for that crowd. Did I have some growing pains with this? Absolutely, but uh, it's allowing me to play games that I normally didn't have the time to play, like sitting down and had the time to play, so I feel really good about it. But that about wraps it up for this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, be the cool guy or girl that gives this video a thumbs up. If your experience was a little bit different, maybe you're not a big PC guy and you picked this up and you've been having a great time with it, let me know with a comment down below. If you have the Steam Deck, I wanna know what your experience has been like. But till then, it's your average consumer, Peace. Carl, would you buy it? No. Why not? I'm a P5 person, I'm not like. Carl's like, PlayStation 5, it's easy, that's it. That's my system, I get it.